hot take. Political comedy is sometimes funny and sometimes it isn't. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye now. Bye bye. Nah. Obviously, there's more to it than that. Oh, you want me to talk about it? Okay, just let me give a little speech. It was actually written by the same guy who wrote for Obama, so flex. My name is Tara Mooney and this is the only channel on YouTube where all videos are written and produced by a cow. She couldn't be in the video today because she's actually on the picket line with the railway strikers. She's a better leftist than I am. Now that's real praxis. I just sit in my room listening to pop mashups with the Soviet national anthem. Oh, baby. And I've read um, one of Marx's books, you know, the, the short one, what's it called? But I can't be asked to read Das Kapital. It's like a thousand pages, f*** that. But if you like and subscribe, the cow might appear in the next video. People seem to have strong opinions when it comes to political comedy. Opinions ranging from keep politics out of comedy, all the way to the duty of comedy is to correct men by amusing them. When it comes to political satire, there's an inherent motivation to parody someone's vices, whereas comedy, by definition, has a much simpler intention. To make an audience laugh, that's it. So when comedy gets political, audiences often feel wrong-footed. I was just here to laugh, not be preached at. It starts to feel as if the comedy has an agenda other than making you laugh, and that seems to rub people the wrong way. That being said, distinguishing too rigidly between satire and comedy in general doesn't really reflect art today. Genres blur together to create hybrid genres. Just to name a few, we've got tragicomedies, dramedies, rom-coms, others. So that's why when people say comedy with an agenda isn't comedy, I don't agree. Because firstly, there can be multiple motivations behind a joke. Do we tell jokes solely to make people laugh? Or do we sometimes do it to ease tension, to gain approval, to laugh through the pain. Gallows humour anyone? You can be making jokes for all sorts of reasons and regardless of the why, if people laugh in response then I guess it's comedy. So I would say it's a moot point. That being said, comedy does suffer when the primary motivation isn't to make people laugh and say if it's instead, for instance, to make a jab at someone. A classic example of this is SNL covering Trump. Even if you agreed with the anti-Trump message, which obviously I did, hello, SNL sketches on Trump got very tired very fast. In fact, all Trump-related comedy got very tired very quickly. And obviously some of this is because, you know, no one can be funnier than Trump because he's just a parody of a human. He feels unreal really. But a big thing is that repetition kills humour, which I'll get to later. And also you could sense that they were just doing it to call him out. The motivation was spite. That's often not very funny. And that meant that the humour side of things got neglected. It might not be good comedy, but it is still comedy and there's a reason I say that. The label comedy is often used as a get out of jail free card from criticism. As if something being comedy means it's exempt from moral scrutiny. But actually, any piece of art or content is fair game to criticism. I've seen this a lot with edgy comedy online. You know, when someone makes a dark joke and the punchline is to just be shocking or offensive. And if the reaction is negative, they'll either say, it's just a joke, or it wasn't meant to make you laugh. It was meant to make you triggered. Yeah, that's the joke. Women are, it's a meme. Women are funny. Yes, that that's a joke. And you're 36. It was meant to uh, subvert expectations. I'm pissing them off by using a twist of something not that mad, is not guys. actually real. He's not That's mad. That's a lot of what my jokes are. It was meant to challenge ideas. We at Comedians Against Comedy represent a growing number of comedians who strive to remove all comedy that isn't in direct alignment with Dove Soap's publicity team. Call us crazy, but we subscribe to the idea that being a comedian is about challenging the idea that comedians should be challenging ideas. If you're getting angry with the audience for not finding your jokes funny, maybe just write funnier jokes. Some comedians seem to just want to have their it's just comedy cake and eat it. Whereas I think, as audiences, we should accept that comedians have the freedom of speech to make their jokes, say what they want to say, and then we, in return, have the freedom of speech 
to respond to what they say and they just have to deal with it. It's that simple. With all that in mind, I want to work out why political comedy flops so much of the time. But before I do, here's a message from today's sponsor that was also written by Obama's speechwriter. Don't look that up. Ho, 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 Merry Christmas. If you, like me, have attempted to have a ho phase several times but have failed miserably because you'd rather just stay inside and watch Gilmore Girls for the 74th time, but still have itches that need to be scratched, well, have I got the tool just for you. It's hibernating girl winter, so why not stay warm inside with the Lilo Dot? That's right. I've partnered again with Lilo because j'adore their products. Genuinely, it's really nice to recommend something to you that I really enjoy using a lot, very regularly. I worry that I sometimes get a bit too excited for these ad reads, but you know what? We're done telling women to calm down. This one's extra special and extra focused because it is a pinpoint massager. The Lilo Dot moves in a constant elliptical motion with its soft bendable tip stimulating with absolute precision. It features eight patterns with varying intensities packed inside its unconventional shape. Speaking of its compact design, it's a perfect size to fit between your body and someone else's body. So as well as using it solo, you can use it with a partner or multiple. It's 2022, the world's your oyster. And here's where it gets even better. I did a little yippee when I read this. If you spend more than 179 US dollars on Lilo.com, you get a free Sona that hits the spot, literally as well as figuratively. And it's waterproof and it has long lasting charge. I mean, what are you waiting for? For Santa to get it for you? Because if you are, there's something I need to tell you. Click on the link in the description to get your own Lilo dot. And thank you, Lilo, for sponsoring. Love ya. The case study for today is an online publication called Babylon B. Babylon B, fake news you can trust. Babylon B is a right-wing Christian news satire site, often described as the conservative version of The Onion, except The Onion is funny. Now, I'm already aware of what the response will be from many people in the comments. Well, of course you don't find this funny. You're left-wing. No, no, no. See, that's where you're wrong. Most liberal political comedy isn't very funny either, but colleagues of mine have already made videos dissecting this. The reason I picked Babylon B is because they're a perfect example of how a publication can once be capable of successful and even sometimes funny satire to completely losing any ability to make a single joke. In the first year or so of the site's existence, it focused more on the Christian satire. So it poked fun at televangelists and uber evangelicalism. Then something changed. Two things changed. One, Trump became president in 2016. And secondly, Babylon Bee changed ownership. The Christian satire took a back seat and the content that took its place, well, let's take a look. I have a feeling that this one's gonna be a doozy. I don't think I could go at it alone. I think I might need some help from a friend. Who me? Excuse me, um, I love you. Are you ready to um, ingest some brain worms with me? No, but I'm excited to go on this journey together, ooh woo. Ooh woo, indeed. I've done my best to avoid any Babylon Bee content, but um, I fear that ends today. The definitive guide to escaping cancel culture. And you know that any comedy that talks about cancel culture is gonna be really funny and not tired and hackneyed and just boring. Oh yeah, and they definitely know the real definition mm. of cancel culture. It's not just like them pulling the definition out of their asses. So you've been canceled. Sad. Seriously though, serves you right for saying, ooh, that song is gay on AOL Instant Messenger when you were in high school. Shame on you. Now the mob is out to destroy your life with devastating amounts of accountability. Never fear, we at the Babylon Bee are experts in getting cancelled and can help you out. The cancellation being referred to here is when Babylon Bee got suspended for 12 hours for tweeting that government official Rachel Levine was man of the year, targeted harassment of a trans individual. Now, as per Twitter's rules and regulations, the countdown would not begin until they delete the tweet, which they refused to do and... 
Basically, this led to them going viral. Long story short, this made Elon Musk very horny for freedom of speech or whatever. And one of the first things he did when he bought Twitter was reinstate Twitter accounts that had lifetime bans. And those accounts included Jordan Peterson, Kathy Griffin, and the Babylon Bee. Here are a few pointers. First thing you've got to do, offer a tearful and heartfelt apology, which always makes cancel mobs go away. Apologies never make things worse. Cancel mobs are extremely forgiving and will always offer forgiveness if you apologize. These people do not understand basic human interaction. Just because you say you're sorry, that doesn't mean the other person has to forgive you. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. It worries me because it's like, is this how you treat the people you know in real life? Probably. Like if you do something shitty and you apologize, like you automatically expect to be forgiven just because you said you're sorry and like the other person should forgive you and stop being sensitive anyway. You don't even need to mean it. I'm sure mm -hmm. we all know people like that. Be the world's most famous author or the world's most famous comedian. If your name is JK Rowling or Dave Chappelle, you might be okay. If not, Tough luck. This is interesting because it's not as if conservative Christians ever cancel. You could even go back to the early 2000s for an example of conservatives like canceling someone when I think it was the Dixie Chicks who like called out George Bush and like that ruined their career. Traveling soldier, one of their big hits about a soldier who dies in Vietnam. But of course the soldiers on everyone's mind that night were the men and women poised to invade Iraq. Just 15 words, but they were 15 words. Just so you know we're ashamed, the President of the United States is from Texas. It started with angry calls to radio stations. We're gonna boycott them for their music and we're gonna boycott you for playing it if you don't stop playing it. Well, ma'am, that one's the last one you're gonna hear. Hundreds of stations simply stopped playing the songs they had celebrated over and over again hours before. I love their songs, but I don't agree with what they did. Thank y'all for pulling the Dixie Chicks, and I think we should be just as embarrassed for them. One columnist said she might have well have said Osama bin Laden is her lover. Oh, I, mean, that, I can't believe that's even that's worth repeating. Stupid broads. You know, and, and we'll take the heat for our mistakes, but this is a little out of control. I mean, when people say things like Saddam's angels. On the internet, they had pictures of you all with Saddam. Doctored right? pictures, and that's that's internet stuff. It's Doctored ridiculous. Pictures. Clear that up. We did not have our picture made of Saddam. <laughs> I remember um, buying one of my first CDs, and it was like the 2002 Grammy nominees, and they were on there, and it, with their cover of Landslide. Gosh, they well, that's a nice little throwback. Sorry that your career ended. Sorry. Your career ended because you're based. I think we were one of the first people to feel that <laughs> cancel culture. And I think, you know, what we said back then, or what I said back then, <laughs> would not even be a thing today because it was right. really mild compared to what people say today. Hey, Dixie Chicks, if you want to come on the pod, hop on the pod, message me. Invent a new gender for yourself. Claim discrimination. Oh, God, that's so funny. <laughs> Transphobia's Funny! Did you just assume my gender? The one joke. The one joke. One joke. I'm surprised it took, you know, uh, one minute, 20 seconds to get to that, the one joke. Now go forth and do whatever you want without having to fear the consequences. Uh, shall I write a comment? Yeah. What shall I say? Oh, I could mention how, um, Apparently, I don't know if you knew this, Anna, and I don't know if this is true, but I can't be asked to verify it. Apparently, cats, when they're pregnant with a litter, can have two dads. So if you're a cat and you want to have a hoe face... Yeah. Okay, I'll write that. So cats, when they be pregnant, can have two baby daddies in a litter. Modern women, eh? That's a low-value woman right there. That's a good comment. I'm proud of that. I have a feeling, you know what? I'm hopeful. I think this one might actually be funny, Anna. Fingers crossed. As Sesame Street continues to educate children on how the world works in this day and age, the show has introduced a character who is blamed for all the world's problems. Todd, a Muppet who's a white male. Uh, I'm getting some breaking news. Despite being a fictional character and a Muppet, Todd has been canceled simply for being white. Sounds like Todd is about Jesus to make a statement. Christ. Let's check that out. Whoops, sorry. Powerful words from a piece of felt. In other news, the CDC has announced that vaccinated people can now punch unvaccinated people in the face. Oh crap. You know what they say, Anna? Hope breeds eternal misery. I didn't even smirk during that. I didn't even have a nice little 
exhale out of my nostrils. Not even that. You were robbed of a giggle. After over a hundred years of selling its caramel popcorn snack under the name Cracker Jack, parent company Frito-Lay announced today that it would be rebranded as Cracker Jill. Joining us to share the reasons for these exciting new changes is Frito-Lay PR representative Earthskin Joster. Earthskin? In these changing times. I think that was like their way of making fun of non-binary people who choose like unconventional names or just like trans people who choose unconventional names. That is, that is really clever. Peak comedy. That is clever of them. I love, I love subtle things that you have to really think about and then you read between the lines and you don't even get the reward of laughing at the end of it. Those mm -hmm. are my favorite kind of jokes. Mm -hmm. At the expense of a marginalized group, that is a knee oh, slapper. Even better. Mwah. Oh, mwah. It's been brought to our attention that the term cracker may be perceived as a pejorative. And as such, we will now be going forward with a new name, Caucasian Jill. Oh, we, we think that. All right, yeah. Yeah, I got it. Okay, so we ran it by a study group and they all pointed out that Caucasian has the word Asian right in there. And you know what, we're just gonna call it white Jill. Okay, so we feel that Jill is a little too specific and exclusionary. I feel angry because I know that I'm only on this earth for a certain amount of time and I feel like I'm losing it to watching these videos. You could argue that's our job in general with YouTube. A lot of our time is just dedicated to researching shitty people. But someone's gotta do it. Could you argue that this is almost like, kind of like a critique the left makes, how like this like virtue signaling and representation and like certain media doesn't actually do anything to help those marginalized groups? Or is that too deep of thinking for them? Our new name is gonna be White Pow- Did he just, was he gonna make like a white power joke? Yes, I think so. This is literally not funny. It's just not funny. It's just not funny. Like I, <laughs> I have the straightest face. For someone who is not straight, I have the straightest face right now. This is the straightest thing you've done in years. I haven't been this straight since I was closeted in high school. You know what, Anna? Um, this channel is very versatile. The politics might be one note. They might only tell two jokes. However, their content does vary in that not only do they uh, create, you know, live action sketches and stuff like that, they also produce animation. Oh no. This monster kills if it hears you, ellipses, say an opinion it doesn't like. Ooh, I wonder what those opinions will be, Anna. Ooh. Don't make a sound. Oh, the dyed hair. This is really funny. This is really funny because the monster has glasses, dyed hair, a nose ring, and a t-shirt with what looks to be the pride flag. Do we have the same nose ring? Is it you, Bestie? Did you do a collab? You look really blue in this. This is my secret project. It's just if raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour causes 1.5 million people to lose their jobs, how is that idea still on the table? <laughs> If your business <sighs> and afford to pay employees 15 bucks, your business deserves to close. Yeah. Yeah. Working class people deserve to be able to live too. Yeah. Also, it's like they can't, a lot of corporations can't afford to pay that, but just don't want to because it cuts into their profits. You know, God forbid the CEO makes 10 million a year instead of 11 million a year. Free speech is bad. Free speech is bad. What are you doing now? Love is love. 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 I don't even know what that means. Be quiet. The alphabet is problematic because it doesn't contain enough letters to represent all genders. You know what? I actually am going to say something that might surprise you. This is so bad that it's funny. Yeah. Like, I'm not laughing because I'm enjoying the content. I'm laughing because they couldn't have done worse. This is embarrassing. This is embarrassing. Let's let's pivot a bit and mm. let's talk about gender. Shall we see what their uh, gender comedy is like? Comedy. In honor of Pride Month, <laughs> here are Babylon Bee's top two genders. Can't imagine where this is going. Oh, no. It's not the same... Joke. We would now like to take a moment to rank the top genders, from best to even more best. This ranking was conducted by a wide range of experts, from doctors to those in the scientific community. So without further ado, our first gender is... Men! Men, what a gender. 
sometimes there for you when you need them the most. Thoughtful and thoughtless all at the same time. And they're hairy. Thank you, men, for being male. And our next gender in our ranking of top genders is... Women! Wow, women. Now there's a gender. <laughs> Me when I came out. Yes! <laughs> and that is what Pride is all about. I didn't realize they were so pro-lesbian on this channel. They really said lesbian rights. The, the next gender is... Uh, guys, go ahead and scroll the teleprompter. Next gender... What? Hey. Oh, I get it. It's because there's only two genders. That's so... Funny. In other news, migrant cages will be bathed in rainbow colors in honor of Pride Month. Okay. All right. Okay, Anna, you know what? I think we've lost all hope. And in light of that, I'm just going to show you one more sketch because I think I've put you through enough. And it's also about identifying. And I would like to see if they can come up with another joke. Give them one more chance. Yeah. And if they can't then we'll just cut it there. Throw one more bone. Hello, my name is Norm Hiccup. I am a bicyclist and this is my story. I had always known that something about me was different. There was something wrong. After a lot of thought and reflection and in no way related to the number of motorcycle races I lost, I finally realized that my life as a motorcyclist was a lie. I was a bicyclist. Ah, it's the one joke again. Can they come up with anything else? Guys, <laughs> come on. You've got a whole team behind you, a whole yeah. team of writers, my, albeit maybe not the best writers. Not one of you could come up with something original, something funny even. I know that's a lot to ask. You know, we believe in you. You can do it. Mm, well. Do you want to tell me your overall review of this content? Um, I enjoyed spending time with you. Aww. But... I think that the Babylon Bee should delete their channel. And I know that's not pro-free speech of me, but it's embarrassing. I agree. Like, I don't think they should delete their channel based on the grounds of being against free speech, but based on the grounds that their content is not funny. And that is the worst crime you can commit, especially if you call yourselves a satire channel. I thought that would be a good moment for me to jump on with my analysis. We actually filmed this several months ago and because of various life things, I finally managed to get this video put together. And since then, Elon Musk has bought Twitter. Elon Musk has destroyed Twitter. Roe v. Wade was overturned. We've recently had yet another mass shooting specifically targeting the LGBT community. And I think I've come to realize what it is that makes the Babylon Bee so un funny. So here are the main reasons why they aren't funny. And the first one is an obvious one, which we've already touched on. And it's that they're punching down. They're attacking a marginalized group and further contributing to their marginalization. And what's even worse is that they're doing it on purpose. The motivation behind said jokes is hatred. And the second thing, repetition, repetition, repetition. They really do just have one joke. They claim they have two jokes. All right, guys, listen up. As conservative comedy writers, it is not good that we only have two jokes. We've got blank identifies as blank, and did you just assume my gender? But those are the same joke. And to make things even better is that they claim they're in on the joke, the, the joke that they only have one joke. They claim they're in on that joke, which is just, Amazing. I'm not owned. You're owned. Thirdly, it's not successful satire anymore. When they satirized Televangelist, the reason that worked is because they were parodying truth. And that's a shame. Not only because of the social harm it does, that's obviously the most important one. But if we're just talking about this through the lens of comedy, people who have worked for the Babylon Bee, I don't know if they're still there, have been able to create funny content. If they just stuck to the Christian satire and, you know, the silly jokes about dads, they'd be gravy. But unfortunately, their motivation to make a point about how invalid they think trans people are has snuffed out any flame of humor. Well, I guess they're making a lot of money, so does it really matter? They're making more money than me. <laughs> and just to apply this on a personal level, I really do think that the best humor is with pure intention. The funniest jokes are the ones where the motivation was 
just to be funny. Like if I look at my own work, for example, my videos that I think are the funniest, personally, are my classically Abby videos. And I think a big reason for that is that my intention going into those videos was just to say, look, this is really goofy, isn't it? Yes, I was criticizing a conservative woman, but any points that were made about society were kind of just a bonus. And this is a tug of war I have when it comes to creating my content. Do I want to be a fun loving commentary channel that just makes a bit of goofs and gaffs? On the other hand, do I want to be a hard hitting video essayist? I'm trying to find a way to marry the two. At least that's what I'm trying to do. I know I don't always get it right. But yeah, I think that's about it for today. I just wanted this to be a short but sweet one. Sorry I've been gone so long. Uh, long story short, my bathroom ceiling collapsed and I had to move really suddenly. <laughs> Whoops. So yeah, that was a doozy. Well, I'm back and I'm ready to pop out them videos, like t-shirts out of a t-shirt gun. So yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Alrighty, well, hello, sinners. This is Anna Marie, and I am so honored that my cats have been picked for the subscription pet shout out for this week. So let me introduce you to them. First up, we have Molly. She is a gorgeous calico kitty. She's going to be 10 years old next year. I can't believe it. Time flies by so quickly. She is a little shy and elusive, but once she feels comfortable around you, she is so sweet and affectionate and she loves to cuddle with my Squishmallows. Recently, she has been going through um, some health problems with her tummy. Thankfully, she's on the mend now and she's feeling a lot better, but still, please send her some good vibes. Next up, we have my younger cat. His name is Grigio. He just turned six back in April. He is a mackerel tabby cat. But uh, when he went to the vet recently, we found out that due to his size, that he might be part wild cat, possibly part Maine Coon. He is a very sweet boy. He has the cutest voice ever whenever he's um, chirping for food or just attention. It's just the sweetest sound. He's very playful. He is very sweet. He's not the most affectionate kitty, but he just likes to be in people's presence. And he's very social when people come over. He especially loves my partner. Yeah, those are my cats. I love them dearly. They are the best cats I could ever ask for. And I'm so happy to have them in my life. And I'm happy to share them with you all today.